Whoa, the sky is blue. We'll never lose. If you can see it, we'll believe it coming true. Hey there, guys, and how are you all doing today? My name's Rob, a.k.a. Crow. Crow! Magic. Magic! <laughs> so, with me today, of course, we've got the one and only Topper Gecko. It's great to have you on the channel, man. I'm really ecstatic, ecstatic about having you on. Ecstatic? Christ, that's a little bit of a high bar for me to follow, but thanks for having me on, Mr. Robert Dutton. Very much appreciate it. Hi, guys. No worries, man. Um, it's just fantastic because you've always been one of the commentators that I've looked up to. You've got a really good um, voice and everything and commentary, and my phone has just decided to go off, so... You know, um, but yeah, it's just fantastic to have you on. <laughs> um, Rob, so hey, I want to do. Can I just say to the viewers before we start, Rob, that um, I actually thought Rob was a very nice boy, and I've said this to him myself. I thought, Rob, you're a very nice boy from his commentaries. I've spoken to him a little bit on Skype, and he's one of the foulest, most depraved creatures in real life that you'd ever spoken to. This guy's an absolute sex pest, a pervert. <laughs> he spent about an hour yesterday threatening um, to rape uh, E. Maxwell. And yes. Game Fest. So in, <laughs> be careful. He's a, he's a wolf in sheep's clothing, ladies and gentlemen. He's definitely a one to watch out for. E. Maxwell's my bitch. I'm, <laughs> the idea is at Game Fest, we're gonna, I'm going to try and get him on the floor and dry hump him. So if that video goes up, that, will, that better go viral. <laughs> I reckon it definitely will. So I want a quick um, this or that with you, uh, just for five or six questions just so that people can get to know you. So, yeah. Coke or Pepsi? Pe uh, uh, Coke. Family Guy or American Dad? Family Guy. Um, Cleveland Steamer or Golden Shower? Um, Golden Shower. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of any of the others. <laughs> uh, cock or Bulls? Um, cock. Oh, yes. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. So, there you go, guys. He's... A cock loving, um, golden shower loving kind of person. <laughs> yeah. So, a bit kinky, but yeah. So, I thought we'd talk about, obviously, because there's FIFA in the background, I thought we'd talk about the obvious football. And the first thing I want to ask you is you're a Southampton fan, yeah? That's absolutely correct, yeah. So, who are your rivals, personally? Our rivals? God, there is only one Portsmouth. Portsmouth FC, the skate bastards. So what do you think of the fact that they could be going out and um, I've heard today that they could actually be going out of business? Rob, I'll be totally honest with you. I'm fucking delighted. I'll be <laughs> honest, I don't yeah. blame you because... If they go out of business, I'll be dancing in the streets, believe me. A lot of people say that it'll be sad because the rivalry will be gone. No, I don't feel that way at all. In fact, I would probably sacrifice the Saints getting promoted to the Premiership this season to have Portsmouth go out of business. I'd love it so much. I have to admit, I kind of agree with you because the fact of the matter is, even though we're down at the bottom, I would let, I would be well happy with anything to go Cov's way to make us survive in the championship. <clears throat> but also, they kind of deserve it because they've been living out of their means for the past couple of years. Even when they went into administration two years ago, they still didn't really cut back on the spending and they knew it was coming. And for me... Their administrative board have fucked them over, really. I'd, I'd feel sorry for the fans, but I don't feel sorry for the actual team, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I know exactly where you're coming from, but I don't even feel sorry for the fans, mostly because I know quite a few of them and they're complete wankers. <laughs> but above, above that, like, when Portsmouth were in the Premiership, they always say, best fans in the world, best fans in the world, never pointing out that they only had a capacity stadium of 19,000. If you have that smaller stadium, that smaller attendance, then it's easy to have only diehards. But even though, right, they said they had the best stadium in the world, etc., Saints had a better average attendance when we were in League One than they do now, and even we had a better attendance in League One than they did in the Premier League. So the idea that Portsmouth ever had the um, financial income to support the players they were signing was always bullshit. It was always nonsense. And now they're struggling. They're sh now they're struggling this league. Their, their attendance is about 14,000, 15,000 uh, a year, average attendance. So they're a small club. They're full of wankers. I'll be delighted when they get out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in terms of Cov, our football rivalries are Leicester, 
Birmingham, Aston Villa. You can guess why. The Villa were the team that sent us down from the Premier League and they're our local rivals anyway. Um, completely hate the Vile. They're nicknamed the Vile by us on Birmingham. Completely hate them. Um, the fans are idiots when it comes to a cover against Villa sort of atmosphere. They they try and make out that they're better than us now. And at the end of the day, we're in different leagues. I'm not really bothered about them anymore. If we were to ever play them, of course, we'd kick off and we'd have a moan and that. I'm, I'm never a fan of um, of violence in football. But you know how it is, all of the banter. And the same goes with Leicester. I mean... They're our biggest rivals now and they turn around and say that they're not even bothered about us when clearly they are because when we go to their stadium they kick up one hell of a fuss and it's just, I just don't like Leicester or um, as I say um, Aston Villa and the one team that's really surprised me lately and I'll be honest they've been off my radar for a couple of years but they've only come onto it in the past two or three weeks and that is the dirty scum that is Sunderland. The reason why is because <laughs> I don't know if you've heard this story but they came onto our fan support forums and basically trashed us saying they were hoping we were going out of business because of what CSU had done. They're, they're hoping we go out of business, they hope that we're, there's no Coventry City anymore. They hate all of the fans because of something that happened 35, 40 years ago. And basically what it was was with 15 minutes left, we found out that um, all we had to do was draw with the team we were against to uh, stay in the Premier League. So we decided to pass the ball around. Yes, I know it's disgusting. I know it's not the greatest thing. But come on, 35 years. Seriously, is that too long to hold a grudge I've, I just sort of think it is it's just <laughs> gone down from generation to generation and the fact that they came onto our fan base and started slating into us it's just fucking disgusting and to be honest I hope they get their shit pushed in in this league this season and I, I can't remember what league it was the FA Cup I think I think they're still in it and I hope they get battered in the next round I don't want I don't want to see any of their shirts or any of their badges again and at the end of the day that's the only reason for me hating them is because they kicked off and started on the S and it just does my head in but yeah, so we've both got one <laughs> club that we really, really despise. And I'd go as far to say Sunderland are probably worse than Leicester at the minute because they nicked our keeper as well, who was a legend at Coventry City. They nicked Kieran Westwood and they don't even play him. And he would have saved us from going down, no doubt about it. He was a fantastic keeper. He's, he's better than um, all of the Sunderland players put together, if you ask me. And why they're not playing him, I really don't know. But also, I wanted to talk about the the uh, theory that does money ruin football? As in, does the money going into big teams and stuff like that, does it ruin a footballing experience in the English leagues? What do you think? Really, really difficult question. <laughs> really difficult question. Because it's like, well, you can look at the American sports franchises for a different model. And um, not to go into it too much, but to, to cut a long story short, in America, all of the systems are, are designed in order to make sure that different teams always win. So you have one generation of, of a team will win, for example. You have like a really good New England Patriots team. And then by the time the next generation comes around, by that time, the team that, that team gets old. It's incentivized. So the teams that are at the bottom will then go to the top. So all of the draft picks and all of the financial situations punish you for winning and give you a chance if you're losing to build up. So it gives everybody a chance to be top of the table. Um, or in theory, you know. So that's a kind of a different model. But um, I haven't got any problems with a capitalist model in football. But I do have problems with the way that f football is financially governed. And um, the classic example is that we've already talked about Portsmouth. But another uh, you could do in every league. So, for example, when Saints got bought out and we got saved from um, going out of business, we got a lot of money pumped into us when we were in League One. And so whenever we were, like, we were like fighting for promotion with Brighton every um, like week. Gus Puyer was in the papers saying, Southampton are financially doped. There's no way we should have to compete with a club with four or five times the budget we've got. Which was true. But yeah, we've gone in the championship this year and we're competing with West Ham and they've got a budget which is four or five times the size of ours. 
Yeah. So it just means that there's all the time you have to battle against this financial kind of in, uh, disparity, which kind of it dilutes the, um, the standard of the competition to a certain extent. But at the same time, if anything's been proved in football over the last 20 years particularly, is if you run a club properly, you have good people involved, you have the right transfer policy, the right manager, and you build for the future, that that's worth a lot more than £100 million spent on a fucking whim. So... <clears throat> I have got issues with it as well, and this funny FIFA financial fair play is coming in soon, and that's going to make a big change. So we'll have to see what that does. But for me, the kind of principle of that was is at the moment, like Man City, people say Man City they're fucking financially doped. Well, yeah, but how does it change the monopoly otherwise? Because if it's always the clubs with the biggest incomes, like Manchester United, are always going to be number first. So the fact that the somebody's come in and put money behind Chelsea or put money behind Manchester City or Leeds in the past it makes a little bit of variety. So I don't have a re- really have a problem with it. I have more of a problem with the idea that all of the big clubs who have the 70,000 seat stadiums and the huge financial turnover, if that stayed forever, then that would be more of an issue. But of course, you've got like the Glazers and all of these financial situations where people are buying clubs with, not, with no money of their own and buying clubs and like mortgaging the clubs on their own basis, on their own assets. And it gives all this kind of fucking weird financial background to everything that's going on in the competition. But the truth of the matter is, is that clubs are always rising and they're always falling. As a Saints fan, as a Coventry fan, me and you know that better than anybody else. 20 odd years in the top division every single season and then both of our clubs almost going out of business. Definitely, yeah. I totally agree with you. The only thing I would say is, I do think it's kind of out of order on the lower teams because of the fact that teams like Man City, I've made I've made no um, truth. I've said all of the truth all of the time that I'm not a massive Man City fan because of the fact that they have got so much money and they try and call themselves the Sky Blues when they're really not. Um, but the thing is, for me, if they are going to win the title, they will be named the checkbook champions by. Not only myself, but by 99% of every other supporters in clubs um, down further down the league. And I don't know, it seems as though some massive buyer can come in and take a, and win a trophy. And for me, it should be um, working your youth academy, working the avenues that you can get, buying young players in and moving them up. I mean, even with... Teams like Man United, they've got people like Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, um, Gary and Phil Neville at the time. It yeah. all came through the youth system. And you look at Man City, and I don't mean to be harsh to them, but where's the youth? Where's their right. youth system? I mean, they've got one or two players, but they've got nowhere near the likes of Man United. No, I'm not disagreeing. I mean, they've got... Well, they bought Joe Hart, but you could say he was a youth player. And they've obviously got Mika Richards, but that's about it. I totally understand what you're saying, but I would I would say to you, go back and show me a league title that wasn't bought. And I'm talking, like, in in my earliest football memories, like, um, my favourite, first ever favourite player was Alan Shearer. And I was in the Junior Saints, and I got a birthday card from Alan Shearer for my birthday. And two weeks, two months later, he was sold to Blackburn for £3.5 million. And Kenny Dalglish's Blackburn team, after breaking every transfer record going, won the Premier League, and that was in '94. So, show me a team that's won the Premier League, and I'll show you a team that ran a checkbook. Yeah. The only, I sh- the I only see team that mean. hasn't that hasn't been like that is Arsenal over the years. But everybody else, even Manchester United, I mean, the team, the years that they've won the title, a lot of the time, um, they were the ones that spent the most money. Let's not forget the original Manchester United team had people like um, Roy Keane. He was a bit British transfer record then at that time as well. It was so, Rio Ferdinand as well. So, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. I, I just think that the fact that there's so much money in the league now that there aren't enough players to go around in the lower leagues. I mean, even in the championship, you can see from a couple of years ago, 10 years ago, let's say, when I went to my first ever game, at, it was Cov against Leicester and we drew 2-2. Two, two. You can still see the quality difference in players now. They're not as good in the league now, whether that's just Cov can't afford the money or whatever. <laughs> yeah. but it might just be Cov, It yeah. just seems as though there's not enough star quality in the leagues below. And because teams like Man City, Man United, 
um, Chelsea, to some extent Liverpool have got so much money. They're buying a lot of players and it's taken, even though it's not very noticeable, if you are like myself and you, um, long-time um, supporters of a lower town club. I mean, I'm not a long-time supporter, but even I can tell the difference from when... Um, from when I went to Leicester and when I go now, I mean, I'm a season ticket holder and you just see some of the, they're not bad players, but you see some terrible play at times. I mean, you've got, we've got players like Richard Keogh who are definitely going to move on at the end of the season, but he's a good player. But that's, other than that, it just seems as though the standard's quite low. And I mean, I'm not having the dig at Chelsea or the teams um, with the money. I'm just sort of thinking, this whole FIFA fair play thing is going to do one hell of a lot and change things a lot, I think. I mean, I hope so. It'd be interesting if it did. It'd be interesting if it did. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, so this is to all, this is the end of the commentary now. I think we've probably gone over a little bit compared to um, the gameplay. So I hope you did enjoy the gameplay and thanks for coming on the show, Topper Gecko. Go check out his channel, guys, and subscribe to him. He deserves loads more views than he's getting now. He deserves every one of you, all of my 130 or so subscribers. Help me! To be subscribed to Topper Gecko, because <laughs> he has the best commentary of any one of the smaller channels, and he just deserves so much more support. And, guys, seriously, go check out one of his channels. You will not regret it. Thanks for having me on, Rob. Much appreciated. Smell you later, guys. All right. Cheers, guys, and take care.